Hey, it's Micah. Mr. I had a price for good decision making. Why just shoot this before you were just a normal person living a normal life? But how come did he gain that price? And why did they give him the price? Mr. N answered, if I had just a single brain to do that, it would have been very difficult. But I used two brains to do that. Is it that Mr. N has two brains? Or is it that we have two brains that are in our heads? Is it an abnormality? No, we just have one brain. Mr. N said he listened to his internal voice that was from his gut. So they're like, wow, man, is it that you have another bundle of fatty tissues found in your gut as a second brain? But no, what happened was that Mr. N listened to his gut. Like when you're talking about the second brain, you talk about what you call the enteric nervous system. We are more familiar with our central nervous system, which is made of the brain and the spinal cord. And maybe we also know about the peripheral nervous system, made of sympathetic and parasympathetic. The one we are least familiar about is our enteric nervous system. The enteric nervous system is a sheet of neurons and neurotransmitters found in the walls of our gastrointestinal tract or our gut. Other parts of the body also contains neurons and neurotransmitters as well. But why, does the, why is the entire nervous system so special? What makes the entire nervous system so special is the fact that it contains similar neurons and neurotransmitters that are in our central nervous system. That's quite awesome, isn't it? The entire nervous system is able to function autonomously meaning it is able to function without the intervention of the central nervous system or the peripheral nervous system. But it does not also mean the entire nervous system does not have a direct input from, from the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The, same with the entire nervous system is able to, con to communicate with the brain through nerves, neurotransmitters, hormones, and the entire nervous system also impacts our immune system. The vagus nerve is the only cranial nerve that serves as communication between the gut and the brain. The vagus nerve also contains motor fibers which cause contraction and relaxation of the muscles of the gut which can make you vomit. So you can see that your brain can actually make you vomit if it reaches. This direct communication between the vagus nerve and the, and the central nervous system helps in a, in a way that stimulating the vagus nerve can increase your mood and can be used to treat depression. This interconnection between the enteric nervous system and the central nervous system can help in a way that the brain can command the enteric nervous system to work more or less depending on the circumstances. For example, it can work more when you are at rest and it can work less when you are performing high physical activities. The gut is also known as the second brain because it contains about 100 million to 500 million neurons which is about five times the number of neurons that are in our spinal cord. If you know how important our spinal cord is in our life, you see how the, you will see the influence that in the entire nervous system has. And if not as much, it will be more than the number of neurons found in the dog. Sorry, baby, not to offend you, but that's just true. And if a dog is able to perform, to show, to make intelligent actions, then our entire nervous system should be able to show signs of intelligence or signs of being able to work on its own. Another evidence is the fact that we can think that during our fatal life, neurons from the central nervous system migrated and found themselves in our gut by mistake or something. But experiments show that there is already the existence of neurons and glial cells in our entire nervous system before the arrival of the of extrinsic innervations like the vagus nerve and its other central motor neurons. Dr. Michael Gershon, the author of the book named The Second Brain, linked in the description down below, talked about experiments that were carried out on mice. The experiment talked about how the gut of mice were isolated and put in a tube. And it was seen that under favorable conditions, the, the gut was able to carry out its peristatic movement and was able to undergo the same reflex as when it is connected to the rest of the body. All of this is just a clear evidence that our entire nervous system has neurons and neurotransmitters that are able to function on their own without the intervention of the central nervous system. 
It is not all the parts of the body that are able to do that. In fact, this is the only part of the body that is able to carry out this type of function. As we know about microorganisms, the guts contain many different microorganisms belonging to many different kingdoms. This microorganism acts as our normal flora, but also it affects our mood, behavior, decision making, and even our perception, perception of the world. And more importantly, it also influences our immune system. People with less of this microorganism show stress response problem, spatial and working memory problem. And more importantly, this microorganism affects our BDNF level. BDNF helps in the stress tolerance, mood, memory, and cognitive ability. If you want to know more about the BDNF level, check the video link in the description down below. The microbes in this entire nervous system has an influence on the level of serotonin. Serotonin is a hormone which acts as a neurotransmitter and it is responsible for regulating the feeling of happiness and well-being. Knowing how much of an impact serotonin level in our body affects our well-being and happiness, it is baffling to know that 90, 90 to 95% of the serotonin found in our body is found in our gut. So, you now understand why if you have maybe a wound on your hand, you will be able to, you will be able to maybe cope with the environment, smile, but if you have maybe a bowel problem, your, your mood will just be disturbed, in fact, your feeling of happiness will just disappear. So, all that is due to the impact that our gut has on our serotonin level. Serotonin helps the gut to move, that is perform its peristatic function, helps the gut to secrete its enzymes to, for its digestion. It can also cause the gut to be nauseated. That is, and it may, it making you to be nauseated after eating something will not make you to understand what to eat and what not to eat. Since serotonin is a feel good hormone, it can be it can be used to treat depression and anxiety by use of drugs or SSR. We can see how the entire nervous system is able to trigger emotional shifts thanks to the neurons and the neurotransmitters and as well as thanks to the microbes present because those microbes can help regulate that serotonin level which is very important in our well-being. These microbes in the entire nervous system can influence our behavior, our decision making as well as our immune system. A decrease of these microbes in our entire nervous system has a great impact. So, having a decrease in these microorganisms, they need to be replenished by you taking probiotics, or in extreme cases, your physician can do you a fecal transplant. Weight sounds weird, isn't it? To transfer a piece of fecal material from one person to another, but all of this is just because those microorganisms are very important for your well-being. So, today we have seen how and why the entire nervous system is considered as our second brain. If I'm asked, do we have two brains? I'll answer. Morphologically, no. But functionally, yes. Thanks for watching. And please don't forget to LSS. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.